Hey guys, this is Lee here. Have you ever been sailing a sunfish or did you just get your sunfish sailboat and want to know what you can do now to make it more fun to sail? So whether you've been sailing for a long time, for a little bit of time, or just a beginner, this video is for you. I'm going to be talking about new hacks for 2022 that you could be doing for your boat this season. Now, the Sunfish Sailboat is one of the most popular boats in the history of the world. With its simple setup with just two lines, one to raise the sail and one to control the sail, it's no wonder that the Sunfish is very popular because you can get on the water sailing in just mere minutes. But with any boat, there's things that you could do to them to help improve your experience. You could possibly go faster, you could possibly make it easier to sail, and if you can make something easier and faster to sail, you're gonna have a lot more fun. So watch all the way to the end of the video so you can see all the upgrades and hacks that you can do for 2022 to your boat to improve it for this season. Several months ago, I made a video on how to upgrade your used sunfish. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out after you watch this video. And I also did another video on the top hacks of 2021. This video are the top upgrades for 2022. So they're gonna be different from my previous videos. So if you add everything together, you're gonna have a fantastic boat. My first upgrade for 2022 is the Jens rig. I'm not just talking about put the gens rig in, I'm talking about using the gens rig full time. What I mean by full time is that you're using it in light air, medium air, and heavy air. And in 2021, Jonathan Martinetti was the first sailor ever to win a world championship with a full time gens rig. Now the gens rig was originally used by Jens Hookinson when he was sailing against bigger, stronger sailors in heavier winds. So the reputation of a gens rig is to be used with heavier winds and especially smaller sailors. But as the decades passed, the gens rig has been used by bigger sailors and smaller sailors alike to balance out the boat. And when you have a balanced boat, you fight the boat less and it's easier to sail. Then you become a better sailor if you are a smaller sailor or if you're a sailor who has less strength, then the gens rig could be for you. Another reason why someone might want to use a gens rig when they're bigger is because sometimes the boat gets overpowered even if you're bigger and it balances out the boat. Another reason why you might want to have a full times gens rig, if you are known to sail in an area that has consistently heavy winds, possibly in the mid-teens and upper. For instance, I sail in the Great South Bay and there's a clockwork sea breeze at one o'clock which cranks up into the upper teens and into the low 20s. If you sail somewhere like Aruba, if you sail in Paracas, Peru, or in Bonaire, these places have heavy winds all the time. Most sailors would benefit for using a full-time gens rig. Now a gens rig could be set up in multiple ways and I talked about it in my gens rig video. It's basically a position where you're repositioning the upper spar and the whole sail plan against your mast. And it's really a position of where you're putting your halyard on your upper spar. If you're a recreational sailor, and if you start to use the gens rig and figure it out, it'll give you more range of sailing. You might stop sailing when the winds get above 12 or 15 miles an hour. The gens rig can possibly help you sail in 12 to 15 or even higher winds with more comfort, and then you can sail in more conditions. So another point of view is my friend Eduardo Cordero's opinion about the gens rig. He never believed in the gens rig for himself personally. He is not a big proponent of the gens rig, but I'm sure he would say for some people is very good. And I'm sure his eight world championships speak for themselves. Now for me personally, I've been using a full times gens rig for four or five years now, and I've been pretty successful in my local and regional racing in light and heavy airs. So I kind of like it. Does it make me slower? I personally don't think so. I think it's more important if you're racing to be able to sail in good pressure, sail in a lift attack, and that's for another video. So check out the gens rig, see if it works for you, and try it for 2022. Now the second upgrade I'm gonna talk about is a mast cleat. In a previous video, I spoke about three hacks in 2021. And one of those hacks was the halyard retaining line that you tied around the mast. When I'm talking about this upgrade, 
for 2022 is a cleat that's attached to the mast without drilling holes into it. I made a video on that that I'm gonna leave a link down in the description below on the Jens rig and the mast cleat videos. What it does, it makes that halyard retaining line obsolete. So why would anyone want a mast cleat? There's a couple of things. It takes off the pressure off the deck from the halyard. Two, sometimes people wanna use it when they're putting on the Jens rig and then they could adjust the different halyards on the Jens rig. And three, some people don't want to drill holes in their masts. I personally have drilled holes in my mast several times and sometimes that happens. So I'm gonna be putting cleats on my mast, but I'm not gonna be drilling holes in them anymore. I'm going to be strapping them in with uh, special clamps and you could check out the description below on how to put a mask cleat without drilling holes and you won't have this happening. And tell me in the comments below, what do you think of it? The third upgrade that I'm gonna talk about for 2022 is something really simple, but I think can really improve your sailing and it's really easy to do. And that is to put some either material, carpeting, something soft and cushiony in your centerboard trunk. Now, some people might call them shims, but I don't think they're really shims. You could put some carpeting inside on the front and the back of your centerboard trunk and on the bottoms and the sides where the centerboard rubs up and down in the centerboard trunk. Now, why would you wanna put some material in there? Some people put cloth, some people put felt, some people put uh, the soft side of Velcro tape and some people put carpet. In. I also seen some people put some sort of plastic strips in there to help the movement of it. I got to sell the brand new boats that were 2022s and the centerboards as they were and for most sunfish centerboards without any cloth, they shake inside the daggerboard trunk. Now, if you go to your sailboat, it's going to be most likely that there's going to be some play in the daggerboard trunk. Why would anyone want to put cloth in there? One, it's to reduce the play in the daggerboard trunk when you're going back side to side, especially in light air. Light air when you're just sailing around and you hear the gunk, gunk, and it's like, it's so annoying. So when you hear that centerboard trunk going back and forth and especially in light air, it, it's just annoying. And so when you're sailing, you don't want to be annoyed. Well, it annoys me, it might not annoy you. You put the stuff in there, you put the cloth in there so you don't get annoyed. But also you could put it in there just so the centerboard doesn't shake. And when the centerboard doesn't shake, it becomes stiffer and stiffer is always better. When you're sailboat racing, stiffer is usually better. Any energy that is translated into the blades and the hull without excess shaking is going to be more efficient. Be a little bit more faster, you're gonna have a little less noise to annoy you, and so your sailing will be more enjoyable. Another reason why you would wanna put some sort of cloth or material inside your centerboard trunk is to protect it from the wear and tear of lifting your board up and down over the months and the seasons. It's been seen over on older boats that you could actually wear the gel coat through to the fiberglass. Is it a source of a possible hole in your hull? If you do it enough times, it possibly is, and then you might get some leakage into your hull. So it does protect your hull also. So where do you put this cloth and how do you attach it? So just say if you're using little pieces of carpet or felt, you could use silicone and you could attach it to the front and the back part on the top of the hull where the where the centerboard contacts the hull. You don't have to do the whole length of the centerboard trunk and you might wanna do the front and aft part of the bottom part of the hull where the board attaches. And maybe on the sides on the port and the starboard side of the centerboard trunk, especially on the top part. Now one hint where you have to figure out when you are placing this material in your boat is to make sure it's not too thick because if it's too thick, it might be really hard for you to get the board in 
and to take the board out. Now, before I get to my last hack, I'm gonna give you a bonus review and upgrade on a Sunfish sailboat. Now, especially if you have an older Sunfish sailboat with that brass hook on the front part of the cockpit, a lot of people don't know what that is. Now, if you just have a brass hook, that brass hook was the leverage that holds the main sheet and sailors hooked their main sheet under that hook and it was the only thing holding the sail and helping them trim the sail. They didn't have any mechanical advantage or significant mechanical advantage and it was just basically using friction and jamming the main sheet into that hook. The disadvantage of that, it, it was harder to sail. So sailors back in the 70s and 80s who just used the hook, I don't even know how they sailed with that. They did sail with it, it can be sailed with, but they get a lot of credit for sailing with that thing. Another thing is don't use that hook and if you can get rid of the hook because I've seen a lot of bloody legs. I would upgrade to some sort of ratchet block with a cam cleat or without a cam cleat. What I recommend is block that has a ratcheting mechanism in it a Harkin block, a Ron stand, and the ratchet means it could go, you could trim the, the, the line easy towards you, and then it goes out a little bit harder when you're going upwind. Now, it also has a switch to it, so you could, it goes back and forth easy, especially if you're going downwind. Now, one thing I did notice not on, on the new Sunfish sailboats that are coming out of Laser Performance in 2022, I got to sail with a Nordis block for a week at the World Championships in Sarasota. Actually, I personally did not like the blocks because they had a switch on the side. And that switch on the side, I found it switched off several times during the regatta. And to me, that was really annoying. And so I had to reach down and, and switch it out. And when you're hiking out, you don't necessarily want to have to reach in and switch the, the ratcheting mechanism. So it was ratcheting and all of a sudden, it was going like this. Now, when you're trying to sail up wind and the wind's blowing in the mid 20s, you want it to be ratcheting. You want it to be hold, holding. This this block here, it doesn't have the switch where it could be hit by the main sheet or something. Sorry about that. Because the switch on this block is integrated and it it's flush, it doesn't hit. So you can see it right there. And then you could, you could stick your finger in there and then it'll, it'll turn. Now, um, some people put um, line in there and they put a little bit of uh, like a handle so they can grab it on the outside and they could switch it easier. I find that I, I never needed that, but you can manipulate this little flush lever so you could put it on and off. And whatever works for you, that's your bonus hack, bonus review of blocks. You could use the Ron Stand, you could use the Harkin. I am not sponsored by Harkin or Ron Stand or Nautos or Laser Performance or anyone. So if you want to use one of these blocks, or you could use a Schaefer if you want, but I would recommend a ratcheting block as your upgrade in 2022 also. Now, I'll leave a link down below on, I made a video on how to install a ratchet block with a stand-up spring and check it out if you want. Now, a second bonus upgrade, which I probably mentioned before and I always will mention it again. And when I see juniors and I see new sailors, this is so important if you sail a sunfish, if you sail a laser, if you sail a big boat, or if you sail a 300 foot sailboat is that please put telltales on your sail. It helps you see the wind flow over your sail and it really will help you sail more efficiently. You'll go faster, you won't fight your boat as much and you'll get to wherever you wanna go quicker. And when you get wherever you wanna go, when you wanna go, it's a lot more fun. Now, before I get to my last upgrade to the Sunfish sailboat in 2022, let's review what I've mentioned before. If you're getting any value from this video, please smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's really easy. Just press the subscribe button down there. It helps out the channel a lot and I really appreciate it. So the first thing I said was the full-time gens rig. And the second thing I mentioned was the no drill mask cleat. And the third thing I mentioned 
was the padding and the material inside your centerboard trunk and make the centerboard more stable in your centerboard trunk. Now when it's blowing 15 and 20 miles an hour or even higher, what do you do? Do you just quit and don't sail? Do you go out and you sail and just get pounded or heel over and capsize all the time? Well, this last upgrade to the Sunfish sailboat is for those conditions. Whether you're a big sailor or a small sailor, but the bigger you are, the easier it is to sail in heavier conditions. So if you're a medium sailor, a less strong sailor, or a small sailor, this last upgrade is going to be for you. When you're trying to think of sailing in really heavy winds for you, first, do your adjustments. Adjust your gooseneck adjuster to a longer distance, maybe even go to 18, 19, 22, 24 inches from the front. And if you don't have a gooseneck adjuster, get a gooseneck adjuster. It's worth a few dollars to get it, and it's going to make your experience of sailing absolutely much better. I didn't include the gooseneck adjuster because I mentioned the gooseneck adjuster in my previous video on what how to upgrade a used sunfish. So please watch that video if you haven't already. Use those upgrades and then you'll be well on your way to having a boat set up in a great way. So when you're out on just say a bigger boat, a lot of these bigger boats have what's called reefing points. And what that does, it lets you take some of the sail area out of your mainsail or even your jib, pull it down a little bit and lash it to the boom. Now, when you're, sh when you're making the mainsail shorter, that's called shortening sail, and the setup is called reefing the sail. That is my last upgrade for this video. You can reef a sunfish sail. Now, I'm not gonna go into the details of how to do it, that's for another video, but basically, you're gonna have to change your rig on land because it's very, very difficult to do on the water. So if you're gonna be sailing in some serious winds, you're going to need a reef. There's a couple of things that I would recommend. One, do not go sailing alone. Usually when people use these reefs that I've witnessed, is that because they were in a big regatta that was a very important regatta, and it was important for them to sail in this regatta. There were safety boats, there were other sailors around, and if anything happened, whether they capsized or broke something, then there was going to be someone there to help them out. And the second thing is when you're going to be sailing in really heavy conditions, it does get a bit dangerous. And when the winds get higher, it's more important to make sure you go out and you're safe first. So always wear your PFD anytime you're sailing a sunfish sailboat, whether it's blowing three miles an hour or 30 miles an hour, always wear your PFD. Now basically how to rig a reef in your sunfish, and I'm not talking about a coral reef, I'm talking about shortening your sail, is you're going to have a new head sail tie that can drop your head from your normal position of maybe four or five inches from the top of your spar, upper spar, and maybe go down several inches. If you have an adjustable Cunningham, you could tighten up the Cunningham and you could bring the grommet all the way down to the tack and you're basically shortening the loft of the sail. And you make sure your out hole is really tight and that will decrease your sunfish sail area and that's called reefing the sail. Now, how many times are you gonna be able to reef that sail? I've seen a few sailors do it, maybe a couple of times in the last 10 or 15 years. And the real reason for reefing the sail is because they were, it was blowing nuclear conditions and it was a world championship. So if you're a beginner sailor and you're thinking about reefing the sail because it is heavy sailing, I would highly recommend you actually thinking about not going sailing that day if you need to reef your sail. So let me know in the comments below, what was your favorite upgrade for 2022? And what upgrades would you consider adding to your sailboat? Please leave a comment down below. I read all the comments and I appreciate them. So if you're interested in learning about the Gens rig or the Telltales, press one of these buttons right here and I'll see you on the water.